Welcome back to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen, joined with co-host David Kerr. And now we move from the presidential campaign say to the opening on the U.S. Supreme Court with the death of Justice Scalia. Uh, David, any thoughts about uh, Scalia and or the, the battle to come? Well, you know, if it were uh, another member of the court, it wouldn't be so pivotal. If it were one of the liberal members, uh, it probably wouldn't really matter all that much. Uh, It'd be a fight about it, but it wouldn't be critical to the outcome of a decision. We've been watching five, four repeatedly uh, in major Supreme Court decisions, and most recently the EPA rules uh, governing uh, power plant emissions. Uh, the president wanted to reduce those by 32 percent. Court saying he didn't justify the cost. It was a 5-4 decision. Today, it would be a 4-4 decision, uh, more than likely, or somebody would cave on one side or the other. It would have been unpredictable. So it matters. There are a lot of big decisions coming up in the next uh, few months and into the next year. The question is whether the president, at this point in his term, gets the opportunity to nominate and have considered a, his own candidate. And then this gets to the hypocrisy that, <coughs> pardon me, that uh, the Trump campaign sort of keeps hitting on that people keep complaining about Washington. Um, when George, both Bushes had nominees or uh, vacancies of any type of judgeship, uh, the Republicans, like in the last year, the Republicans said, oh, yes, we have the right to appoint. And the Democrats said, no, 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 no. Now that it's a Democratic president, the Republicans are saying, no, 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 no. And the Democrats are saying, we have the right to appoint. It was interesting that um, they've discovered a speech by that 90-minute uh, speech that Joe Biden gave on the floor of the Senate saying that George H.W. Uh, Bush should not be able to appoint anybody in the last year and a half of his administration to any level of court, let alone Supreme Court, um, and now the vice president thing should be able to. Um, so that, that's, that's I'm the shocked, question. Tom. There's, <coughs> there's hypocrisy in Washington. I know. Uh, and that is why, I mean, so many people are upset. And this, this really goes back to the Bernie and the, and the Trump situation. Why they are so popular is because people are so done with this. Um, the Democrats also have the, the interesting situation where they will say, well, look, in the Reagan years, they, we appointed Justice Kennedy, he was confirmed in the last year of Reagan. See, you can do that. Well, they, they ignore that uh, Reagan had appointed Bork, which they totally attacked, and they Bork. It's always bad when your name becomes a verb. Uh, and so now being Bork, going for a nomination, means you can usually hoist it on your card. Um, and then, but with a Kennedy, Kennedy is a swing vote. He was the one that went and was really leading the, the effort on the gay marriage one. Um, and so he is a moderate. And to think that this president is going to appoint a moderate is a total anathema to what he has appointed in the past. Um, he has appointed lock, stock, great liberals. Um, and but his lock, stock liberal this time simply would not get confirmed. Right. And, and if, he wants, <coughs> if he wants his legacy, he's going to have to do real politics, and that is find somebody who is moderate enough to get a few Republican votes on board. Well, that's if you wanted to get them to point, approve. Oh, where they um, make it a campaign issue. Yes, and that's what we're hearing is, is that um, they're looking at people um, that when the Republicans say no to it would mean that the Democrats would then, and Hillary would then have a, a good campaign issue, rally certain ethnic groups to go against the Republicans and would help her um, in the 2016 election. So it's more of a campaign issue than Thing. I, I agree. He, he's been on Legacy Watch for a while. Um, and which, it, and you know, that Legacy Watch is an important thing. I mean, if you do get to a point where you say, you know, I do have the right to appoint uh, a negative person, no, you can't. Right. I mean, I mean that, well, he makes a nomination. Yeah. Uh, that's in, that's mm -hmm. in the uh, Constitution. And when, whether or not the Republicans do it, it's their business. But you, you, every, everybody, this is his last chance to make an appointment. It will matter. No, and he will make a nomination, but I can't. I, this is a president that, with the Iranian deal and with immigration, with other issues, APA and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, is doing pushing for the legacy. What will be his legacy? And the, the idea that he had, could appoint a liberal to make the court be liberal for decades to come is a is too nice a case. So I'm going to take a, a moderate that will be able to swing back. Um, I think, and, and I said this before, 
Um, the person to really look at is John Roberts. John Roberts has consistently indicated in his loads of reporting on this that he doesn't like the view that the Supreme Court is political. Um, he doesn't like the idea that it's viewed as dysfunctional and it can't be above politics and something that can't work. They have 4-4 four, four decisions, which the 4-4 four, four decision would mean the lower court ruling stays because the Supreme Court can't work. Uh, it would be an anathema. And so it is very conceivable that he will work with the four liberals to make five, uh, five, three decisions, or maybe try to pull Kennedy over to make it two decisions so that the court looks as though it's working. Uh, and that, quite honestly, there's been very little discussion about how does he perceive the role of the court and how do it go forward. And, and I would think that would be something to look at. I think you've, I think you've made an excellent analysis there. You do capture, I think, Chief Justice's uh, collaborative view of the court. Harkens uh, back to some of the people that he holds as, uh, as idols himself. Former uh, Supreme Court Justice who were very big in working with other other members, right. coming up with consensus. And, and particularly John Marshall. Yes, it was a big one. You, you mentioned that, that Shapiro. Right. Um, just, just since we have less than two minutes left, just to go back, uh, when we had our power panel on, there was a great deal of discussion um, by them that you know, they love these super Tuesdays and you have many states at once. Uh, and it, it sort of is negative in that regard because if, if for example, um, Bernie Sanders or Cruz or Rubio or somebody wins one or two states, the newspaper and the media is not going to say you know, Rubio wins one state. It's going to be this candidate, Trump sweeps all. 11 mm -hmm. others. The same with Hillary and that. I mean, and you need a, a great amount of money, and you need a great amount of effort. And so it really just reinforces what many people feel is a disconnect with our political system. I agree with you more. I, I, I think back to the uh, days when it was uh, the California primary mattered. The race was hard fought to the very end mm -hmm. uh, when surprise candidates all once started doing better. And occasionally when the convention was allowed to have a little bit of an independent role. In this. Right, and um, we would hope that you would make a decision to keep tuning in to Rappahannock Issues. We are very proud to be part of the um, Central Virginia Public Radio Network, and uh, we are very happy to have you watch us. Please continue to turn on to Rappahannock Issues to get important issues and things that are facing your lives in the world today. <laughs>